What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel today. We are going to be doing a overhyped or worth the hype bestsellers edition baby. So I've done videos like this in the past where I kind of explored really popular or hyped up products and I let you guys know whether or not I thought the product was overhyped or worth the hype. And so I thought it'd be fun to explore the best sellers at Sephora in the makeup, the body, the skincare, and the hair care category. So I ended up choosing four products per category and I also wanted to make sure that I chose both older and newer hyped up products. So those older products that have just always been hyped up and are still consistently spoken about. And then of course the newer products that are just new on the scene and people are curious about. So I hope you guys are gonna find this video helpful. Let me know down below if you agree or disagree with my uh, conclusions on all these products. And I'd be happy to have a little chat with you guys in the comment section. Of course, hit the thumbs up button as well. If you enjoy these types of videos and wanna see more and subscribe. If you want to join the fam baby so the very first product that i have here to talk about is a foundation that i really feel is like the og popular hyped up foundation i really can't think of another foundation off the top of my head that has this much love surrounding it and that product is the estee lauder double wear the original full coverage foundation. Now there's obviously a reason why this has been around and continues to be a bestseller for such a long time. Um, there are a couple reasons why I believe that this is such a great product. And the first is obviously the coverage. That's what Double Wear is known for. Like if you want to cover any type of pigment on your face, I promise you that this foundation will be able to cover it. But because this product is so full coverage, you can't really just slap it on your face because if you do that, then it is going to look kind of mask-like. Um, so it is really important that you really finesse this into your skin, that you don't over apply it as well because this product does not need to be over applied. A very small amount of this will go a very, very long way. And I do recommend that if you feel like you still want more coverage after applying a very thin layer all over your face, that you just go in on those specific areas that you want to build up and just build up in just those areas and not another layer all over the face because this product can look very very heavy and very cakey if it's just not applied in in like the correct way besides that this foundation also has the most amazing staying power it will last on your face throughout the whole night it will not break up it will not fade away it will really stay in place so i actually mix this foundation more than i wear it on its own and i feel like this is one of the best mixer foundations because i find that it kind of takes any other more light coverage and less long wearing foundation and it boosts the coverage just a little bit makes the foundation mixture more long wearing but it still looks more lightweight on the skin than if i were to just apply this on its own so overall i do feel like this is worth the hype it just works it's effective it gets the job done and it is quite a versatile product when you know how to use it all right next up let's talk about a newer hyped up product the charlotte tilbury airbrush bronzer a matte bronzing filter for face and body i have two shades here one fair and two medium so i was initially very excited when i saw that charlotte tilbury was coming out with bronzing powders in her airbrush formula because I absolutely adore the airbrush um, what's it called the setting powder it's fantastic probably one of my favorite setting powders I love it because of the texture it's just a very smooth powder I find it does a great job in blurring the skin and so I thought that a bronzer in the same formula would be just perfection I've been in a touch of denial about this product because I keep going back to it trying to make it work and trying to make myself love it just because it had so much it had so much to live up to, but I feel like I've been let down. So spoiler alert, no, I do not think that these bronzers are worth it. First of all, they're very expensive. They're $65, that is pretty pricey, especially for just a bronzer. Yes, you do get a lot of product in here, so that is a plus, and the compact is beautiful, and of course you are paying for a luxury brand, it is Charlotte Tilbury, of course, but it's just not worth it's $65 for me. So this is a very sheer and buildable bronzer, and if you're hearing me say that, and you're like, Jamie, I don't understand you normally eat that shit up. Trust me, <laughs> I know, but this just really didn't do it for me. When a bronzer is so sheer that it barely shows up on the skin and you have to build it up layer after layer after layer to get any type of like intensity or intense pigment to it, then it's just not going to work. So I kind of feel like these bronzers are too smooth for their own good. Was that even a thing? Apparently it is because these are that. So I'm very disappointed to say, because like I said, my hopes were so, so high for this, but I just don't think 
these are worth the hype. I think there are so many other bronzers out there that are sheer and buildable that really give you the, the pop and the effect that you're looking for once you actually build them up after like the, the second layer perhaps, or even the third, not really the 15th. That's all I gotta say about these. Not a fan, not a fan. So the next product that I wanna talk about is actually one that I don't have here with me. So I'm gonna pop a picture of right over here so you can see what I'm talking about, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna know about this. It is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. <laughs> so I feel like the Anastasia Brow Wiz was probably one of the very first fine brow pencils that came out on the market. And ever since that product released, there were so many other brands that kind of followed suit. And there were certain brands that I feel just started to do it a little bit better than the Anastasia Brow is. So just to kind of summarize the product, it's essentially just a really small micro size brow pencil. So it's really great if you do want to create small hair like strokes. So Anastasia really does do brow shades really, really well. I find that they do definitely have something for everybody. As far as the formula goes, it's good. It's not too creamy, it's not too stiff. It applies really, really nicely. The one major issue that I always had with the Anastasia Brow Wiz is that it would consistently break. After a certain period of use, the actual brow pencil would just fall out of the component and uh, I wouldn't be able to put it back in and so the product was basically unusable after that. And that was something that I consistently experienced with this product and so after a certain period of time, I kind of just stopped purchasing it and instead I started purchasing the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, which is essentially the same thing. I do prefer the formula to the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil a little bit more. They are very, very similar, but I feel like the Benefit one is slightly creamier, but not creamier to a fault, creamier in a sense where it just kind of applies a lot smoother. Besides that, the packaging on the Benefit Pencil is really fantastic. I actually really love the packaging. I find it really easy to hold in the hand um, and it, it's just designed well and I never have an issue with the pencil falling out. So, you know, in the makeup world, we can all be a little bit finicky. And obviously if there's an issue with a product, there's another product that's like waiting right behind it that can very easily take over its spot. And I feel like that's kind of just what happened with the Anastasia Brow Wiz. And so, yeah, I just don't really feel like it's totally worth the hype. I don't think it's a bad product at all. I just feel like there are other products that outperform it and work better. Okay, the very last product that I wanted to talk about is probably kind of silly because I think you guys already know how much I love this, and that is the new Fenty Slip Shines. So this is a brand new lip formula from Fenty. They're called the Slip Shines, and they're pretty much sheer glossy lipsticks. Right now on my lips, I'm wearing the shade Glaze. This is a really beautiful warm tone nude. Another one of my favorite shades is Makeup Break. That is the most amazing neutral, nude lipstick it's so freaking beautiful but i'm getting ahead of myself let me rewind a little bit so many brands right now are coming out with sheer glossy lipsticks it's what's trending right now i am not complaining it's probably one of my favorite lipstick formulas to wear just because i feel like it's probably the most flattering lipstick formula. I just love giving a little bit of a hint, just a touch of color to the lips while also simultaneously making your lips look incredibly juicy. What's better? Tell me, there's nothing better. And I have tried so many of these sheer glossy lipsticks, the Fenty ones, really rose to the top pretty quickly. I think the reason why I like these so much is I find that they do last a lot longer than a lot of these other sheer glossy lip formulas because with this particular formula, you are going to sacrifice slightly um, the longevity of the lip product. It's just kind of natural that they're gonna fade a lot quicker. This isn't a matte liquid lipstick. It's not gonna suction cup to your lips. So they are gonna slide off just generally a lot quicker. But I do find the consistency of this to be slightly thicker and creamier. So I find that it really holds onto the lips a lot better than a lot of other formulas. You could see what it looks like on my lips right now. If you've been staring at my lips throughout this whole video being like, what is she wearing? This is it. It's fantastic, a thousand percent worth it. That's that on that. Okay, so that's all I have to talk about with the makeup. So now let's jump into some skincare products. So starting off first with not really like a, a newer product, but kind of a newer product. I feel like this summer, everybody was talking about the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. So this is essentially just a body moisturizer. And the way that a lot of people were talking about this, I thought that this was going to be the most magical, life-changing body moisturizer that would ever grace my body. I don't know if I'm just in the minority, but the scent of this product really just doesn't do anything for me. This is a very, very sickly sweet scent. It kind of smells like creme brulee with a hint of pineapple and a, maybe a touch of coconut. 
but mostly creme brulee. It's not like I went into this being a person who just loves florals. <laughs> like I am somebody who really loves sweet scents. Like all of my fragrances always typically lean a little bit more on the sweeter side, but I typically tend to enjoy fragrances or scents that are sweet, but a mature sweet. A sweetness that kind of just leaves you guessing. This scent does not leave you guessing. This scent just throws up in your face. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's such a horrible visual, but it's really like the first thing that comes to mind when I think of this. I just think of a coconut just throwing up creme brulee in my face. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I don't know, I feel like a lot of people are writing very angrily on their keyboards right now, like trying to be like, Jamie, what are you talking about? This is the best scent ever. I'm completely offended and I'm so sorry, but it's just not for me. Um, and I just wanted to warn those of you who may be considering this, maybe haven't smelt it yet or like wanted to order it online and also don't love things that are sickly sweet. Just, just letting you know, I'm trying to help you guys out here. And on the flip side, if you are somebody who really, really enjoys um, very sweet fragrances, and you may actually really love this. Okay, next up for skincare, let's talk about a Tatcha product. So this is the Tatcha the Rice Wash. This is quite a beautiful face wash, especially if you do have a drier skin type and you find it difficult to find face washes that won't completely strip and dry out your skin. It does describe itself as a pH neutral cream cleanser of rice and hyaluronic acid that gently purifies while moisturizing so obviously it is meant for that purpose and it totally does do that besides that like it says it does have rice in here and those rice particles that are in this wash kind of act like a very very gentle exfoliator it's definitely not abrasive at all i'm not the biggest fan of super abrasive scrubs anyway it's quite gentle but it does enough where it does feel like you are kind of scrubbing off that little bit of extra dry skin that you may have on your face and it does make your face feel nice and smooth when you're done so i do actually think this is worth it so next up, let's talk about the La Neige Lip Sleeping Mask. I mean, do I even really need to say anything? Because I've spoken about these sleeping masks so many times, but if you're just stumbling upon this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay out the facts for you. So all the lip masks come in this little tub and you do have to take it out with your finger. If you don't like that, it does actually come with a little stick that you can use to scoop it out, but I don't really mind. I just make sure my hands are clean and I normally use like the back of my nail so it doesn't get underneath my nail because that's always like the grossest thing ever. I take out a nice little blob of this, put the thickest layer on my lips and I find it just does such a great job of obviously moisturizing my lips and kind of just protecting them, especially in the winter time. I really do like applying this um, when there's a lot of harsh winter winds because it just again protects my lips because it is such a thick, balmy texture. What I love so much about the Laneige lip balms also are the scents. Um, they come in some really fun scents actually. They have like sweet candy, they have a mint chocolate chip I think. Um, this one is my favorite, it's vanilla. And this is what I would consider to be uh, a mature sweet scent. This obviously smells like vanilla but it's very very soft and subtle and it doesn't overpower your face when you put it on um, and so that's why I love these so these are definitely worth it I think they're really fantastic lip balms so the last skincare product that I have here is the number one bestseller in the skincare category on the website and that is the super goop unseen sunscreen Ooh. <laughs> hair got stuck in my lip gloss there. This is another product that I've definitely spoken about on my channel quite a few times, especially this summer, because ever since I got this in my hands, I have not been able to stop using it. And this has been one of my go-to sunscreens for every day. It's one of my favorites because this is truly the most invisible sunscreen I've ever tried, not only in the way that it looks, but in the way that it feels and also in the way that it smells or I should say in the way that it doesn't smell. So the sunscreen, as you can see, is pretty much completely clear. It actually kind of looks like a silicone primer and not only does it look like a silicone primer, it also feels like a silicone primer. When you rub it into your skin, it actually has this way of making your skin feel really smooth. So I actually do find that this creates a pretty great base for your makeup to sit on if you do decide to put makeup on top of your sunscreen. Um, this does actually create a beautiful base, um, which is really awesome. So what's better than a sunscreen that obviously will protect your skin, that doesn't smell, that you can't see, but that also kind of makes your makeup like sit better? You're winning in so many directions here. So 100%, I think this is definitely, definitely, definitely worth it. And just as an FYI, this is reef safe. It is a clean chemical sunscreen. It's non-irritating, there's no synthetic fragrances, and it's vegan as well. All right, that is it for the skincare category. So now let's talk about the hair stuff. Um, so the first product that I wanna talk about is... Mm, 
a Dyson product. So this long stick is, is called the Dyson Airwrap. And obviously Dyson products are very, very expensive. And so obviously it's natural to want to know if they are worth they're very, very hefty price tag. So this is basically a blow dryer that has uh, various attachments to give you different types of looks. So there are actually four different attachments that come with the air wrap if you do get the whole entire kit. Um, one of the attachments is this round brush that has a lot of my hair on it, which is kind of gross, so trying to ignore that. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is probably my most used attachment just because this is what I will often use to blow dry my hair. Um, you basically just, you know, use it like you would any other round brush but what's really nice about the air wrap is that you don't need to use two hands to do this you can do this with one hand because it is just one product it's not like you have to hold a blow dryer and then also a brush there are a lot of products out there that do this I know Amica just came out with a blow dry brush that's really great I do have it and I really do like that one for an affordable option Revlon also has one that is also really great I have that one too and it works really really well um, so if you were just getting the air wrap just for the round brush option i probably wouldn't do it just because there are much 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 cheaper alternatives that will still give you a great blowout result then there's like this flat brush guy i personally use this to rough dry my hair or to just quickly smooth out my hair if i feel like my hair is looking a little bit frizzy i'll go in with this attachment and literally just brush through my hair and with the addition of the heat and not just brushing it, um, you are gonna get a bit of like a smoother effect. The one special piece that the air wrap has is this guy over here. This is something that I don't think exists in any other tool, and this is what makes this product unique. So honestly, guys, I would only get this if you were interested in this particular head, along with the other ones, of course, but this is really what makes this kind of interesting. It basically creates an airflow that makes your hair wrap around the barrel so it will essentially curl your hair with just blow drying. So it's nice because you're not using obviously a curling iron which does cause a lot more damage to your hair and you get a very similar effect. So this is how it works. Literally just wrap around the barrel itself. You just let it sit for five seconds, then you burst it with the cool setting, turn it off, and then you drop it. Obviously this looks very intense, but you just kind of want to let it cool for a second because it drops very quickly since you are just using a blow dryer and not a high heat curling iron. And then once it cools, I just brush it out with my fingers, add a little hairspray, and you're left with a really, really bouncy, pretty look. Especially if your hair is a bit on the longer side, you can get a gorgeous, almost like faux blowout look. So it's pretty much cooled. I'm just gonna put my hand through it. You can see it creates this really beautiful, bouncy curl. There you go. So now that I have this really sketchy curl in my hair, um, I'm just going to take the flat brush attachment and just drain that out really quick. <laughs> so that's my quick little demo on the Dyson Airwrap. Now the question is, is it worth the hype? I do actually think this product is worth the hype purely for this attachment. I just really like the idea of having a, a better option at curling my hair or giving volume to my hair, but not using a high heat curling iron. Again, if you're purchasing this just for the round brush, no, I don't think it's worth it. I think you're better off getting one of the lesser expensive alternatives like the Revlon one or the Amica one. Both of those are really great. Um, but again, for this guy, I do think it is worth it. So another product that I want to talk about is super random. These are the silk hair ties. These are basically very overpriced hair ties, but in all seriousness, what makes these different than like your average just elastic hair tie is that it is covered in this silk material. And this silk material is supposed to be less damaging on your hair. It's supposed to be more gentle on your hair. And I absolutely love these. I have had the same pack for over a year now, and I still have every single one that I purchased from that initial pack, which is kind of incredible because I have never in my life 
not lost a complete pack of hair ties. Every single day I go out of my way not to use a typical hair elastic hair tie and I will search my house looking for these because I do find that they are so much more gentle on my hair. Every single time I put a normal hair elastic in my hair, whenever I take it out, there's always hair stuck to it, which means that it's literally pulling on my hair. And that never happens with these hair ties. I never have that issue. And I just feel like they really just work. They're good. They're hair ties, but they're good, man. They are. Do I think these are worth it? Yeah, yeah, I do. I really do. I think they are fantastic. So next, let's talk about the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo. So this is basically a um, detoxifying shampoo. This is what it looks like. It's this very, very thick, almost conditioner-like consistency. This product is also supposed to exfoliate your scalp, which is something that I never considered up until recently, which is shocking because I exfoliate literally every other part of my body, but would never think to consider to exfoliate my scalp, but it makes total sense. Your scalp is your skin. <laughs> so obviously you do want to get rid of um, excess dry flakes that may be there. And so an exfoliating shampoo is great. And I have been trying a couple different exfoliating shampoos. This one though, I really am just not a fan of. First of all, you guys know how much I love Briogeo. Um, I very rarely talk poorly about one of their products because most, I would say like 99% of the products just work so, so well for me. I just didn't really feel like this really did what it was meant to do. It is called a micro exfoliating shampoo, but I found that the beads in here were so micro that they really just didn't do anything. Like I was barely able to get a scrub going in my hair. Um, and I have another exfoliating scrub for the scalp and it's from Goop. And that one is definitely very scrubby. And I like that one so much more because I actually feel like it gets the job done. Um, with this guy, I don't really feel like it, it does the trick. So yeah, not the biggest fan of that. Besides that, it does actually feel really nice and kind of cooling on the hair because it does have peppermint in it. I don't know, I feel like I can kind of take it or leave it. So it's not really a bad product. It's just not really a product that I feel like is super effective. Um, and so that's why I feel like it is not worth it. Okay guys, the last product that I wanna talk about is another product that I don't have here with me because I did get rid of it a while ago. But I did wanna talk about a whey product because I do find that whey products are definitely very hyped up. A lot of people kind of talk about them. And um, there are a lot of whey products that I really love. Uh, specifically, the Wave Spray though is what we're gonna be talking about today which looks like this. So the wave spray is basically made to enhance your waves. It's kind of similar to almost like a sea salt spray. And I try to use this product in a bunch of different ways. I tried to use it on my hair dry as like a finishing spray to give my hair texture. I tried to use it wet. I tried to use it like slightly damp. I tried to use it in a bunch of different ways. There was a point in time where I actually did use this product quite consistently um, because I did find that it did do a good job of like defining my waves, but my problem with it was that I found that it dried out my hair and made my hair feel just crunchy and a little bit dirty, which I just didn't really like. To be honest, guys, I don't know if I have really the hair type that this product is meant for. I do have very, very curly hair. This may be better suited if you have more of just wavy hair, or even straight hair where you want a little bit more of a wave, but it just really doesn't do much and I don't really like the way it makes my hair actually feel. So for me, I just don't think it's worth it. And I think if you are looking for a product that gives you texture, I much, much prefer the way texturizing spray for example and there's a bunch of other texturizing sprays that I think are great all right guys that is it those are all the products that I have here to talk about today I hope that you enjoy today's video and that you found it helpful I would love to get all of your thoughts as per usual down in the comments do you agree with my verdicts or do you not let me know down below give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it and of course subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I will see you guys in the next one bye